the masculine and the feminine, two energies, yin and yang. These energies, ancient and timeless, dance within us all, weaving the tapestry of our existence and influence in our relationships. The masculine energy, characterized by strength, logic and action, provides a foundation upon which dreams are built. The feminine energy, with its nurturing intuition and creativity, breathes life into those dreams, imbuing them with a depth and meaning. In relationships, the interplay between these energies is a divine dance, a symphony that creates harmony and balance. When in alignment, they form a union that transcends the ordinary, allowing us to connect on a soul deep level. But when misaligned, they can lead to discord and imbalance, obscuring the path to true intimacy and understanding. These energies are at play, whether we're aware of it or not, and understanding them can help you find perfect balance and harmony within your relationships, elevating your connection to new heights. Let us connect and understand the true essence of these energies. In relationships, there's energy. There's two polarities. There's the masculine and there's the feminine. Now in today's world, we've diluted these. We've taken them away. We're telling men to become more feminine. We're telling women to become more masculine. So what happens when you weaken poles, when you weaken magnets? They no longer attract, right? Masculine and feminine are energies. They're polar opposites and they attract one another. This is how attraction works in relationships. If you're a masculine man, you find a feminine woman attractive. Likewise, if you're a feminine woman, you find a masculine man attractive. This is the way it's always been and this is the way we're wired to behave. Because we have this energy inside of us, but it's just completely ignored in today's world. And as I said, it's being deteriorated. This is why sexless marriages are on the rise. This is why divorce rates are on the rise. This is why the attraction between what a man is and a woman is, is just deteriorating. Because we're losing this polarity, this power, this magnetic attraction that we once had. You have to understand both polarities to make the relationship work. And it's something we're not taught about. It's something many people don't even understand, not even aware of. Masculinity behaves differently to femininity. So for a masculine man, they move through the world with logic, with reason, with desire, determination, and these traits of protect and providing, all these gender roles that people are just slammed down as, oh, this is just a social construct and we don't need any of this stuff anymore. This is how this energy behaves. We always think that we've got everything figured out. And we always think that we're just at the pinnacle, this apex of where humans have ever been. There's a reason why gender roles existed and they weren't for oppression. They weren't for making people do stuff they didn't want to do. They existed because they were built off of fundamental elements of the way these energies and the way men and women behaved individually and together. So the reason why a man would go to work is because it was a man's desire to work. It was a man's desire to find a mission in his life, to, to find this mission and this purpose and what it's all about and give that his all. That's why men are just built like that. They're built to just work and, and grind. And it's not to say women can't do it, but it's an energy thing, right? You have different amounts of both energies in your body. You're not just completely masculine. You're not just completely feminine. You have different bits of both. But when you understand which is which, you can understand, oh, okay, this is more of a masculine trait in me. This is more of a feminine trait in me. This is more of my masculinity. This is more of my femininity. And when you understand this, you can understand where all of your desires, all of the way you behave is coming from, is the energy that you have. So as I said, with the man, they have a way they look at life. They have that desire for their mission, their purpose. This is why so much of what men like in the world, be it 
sports and football and video games and war films or all of the like. It's all mission based, it's all purposeful, it's all rigid, it's all structured, it's all this is the enemy, this is the mission, this is what we need to do, we need to get the ball in the goal, we need to do this, we need to unite as a brotherhood and we have this mission that we need to win, we have this mission that we need to conclude this challenge that we want, even as kids, before you're even taught this stuff, boys are doing the same things aren't they, they're climbing trees, they're building stuff, they want to create this challenge with their friends, they want to create this mission, they want to act as the army guys or act as this character and and create a mission to it. It's not just playing. There's always an objective with boys. There's always an objective with men. This is masculinity. And then on the opposite, you've got femininity, right? That's more of a free-flowing nature. It's more just experiencing life in the moment of how it's experienced. There is no objective. There is no goal sometimes. It's just the flow of it. It's the flow of creation and moving with the ups and downs of it. That's the beauty of femininity. It's just that flow. There is no purpose. And you can see this in the way girls behave. They like to do things like play with dolls, play with children, play with animals. And there's, there's no purpose to it. There's no purpose to playing with dolls and having a dollhouse, for example. It's just play. It's that, it's that play and that creation and the maternal instinct that's deep in them to create that family, to experience love. And these are all feminine traits. That's not to say men wouldn't want to experience love as well, but it's a feminine thing at its primal core. That's why the films that resonate with women the most, these old Disney movies, not the new age Disney, but the old ones where a prince would come and save the princess. It's that, finding true love, right? It's such a core feminine desire wanting to find love, wanting to find family, that connection. That's what it's all about for the feminine. Whereas the man, if you do a love film for a man, good luck seeing how many people go and watch that because they're not interested. Oh, I'll do an action movie for the man though and then the whole, the whole theater will be absolutely filled. So we're different, men and women are different. And it's not oppression, it's not oppression to see how Okay, when you look at what both are good at, what both like, what both experience is, the way women move through the world or the way men move through the world, and then you create the family structure that we had that's being eroded away as well, and you have these roles that both played, it's not to say one was more oppressive than the other, it's just what we're both best at. If man has that purpose of a mission, of a goal-driven, logical, reasonable, directive focused goal set then working would be the best point of call for the man hunting working gathering resources protecting because they're strong all this stuff would suit the man right so the man does that likewise we look at what the feminine's good at that love that nature that nurturing the caring the being part of the family making a house a home all these elements that the feminine is perfect at okay well there's two options there's looking after the children and taking care of the home or there's working on but the man's already doing that because it's more of the man's thing right so the woman would stay at home and look after the children and create the house and then over time we were told that this is oppressive of course it's not it's just looking at what both parties are good at and just creating a structure out of that that's not to say that if women can't go to work and the man can stay at home we can do that, but it's just understanding the energy because the energy is going to be at play in both of you. And this is what this video is about. It's understanding this energy and understanding the energy that you have within you and the energy that you want from your partner. Because if you're a masculine man, you want feminine women, right? And if you're a feminine woman, you want a masculine man. So the more you learn about how the masculine behaves as a woman and the more you learn about how the feminine behaves as a man, then the more synergized your relationship will be. Because a lie that we're told is that relationship is 50-50, that you both just bring this equal amount of everything to the relationship. And that's not the case. For instance, something that brings a lot of controversy to this subject. Men inherently are leaders. It's in their nature, right? They want to lead, they want to provide, they want to protect, they want to be at the forefront and lead their family. The same reason they would die for their family 
the same reason they want to lead their family. It's being that figurehead and protecting and, and taking his woman, his family into life and protecting them. So that's leadership qualities, right? As a woman, you want that from your man. You want him to provide and protect you and die for you if necessary, right? You want that. If you're a feminine woman, you especially want that. So a man's moving into that energy. He's moving into that role of being a leader and providing protecting for his family. But then so many men get then shut down from women because they're not willing to be submissive to their man who's supposed to be leading them. Because once again, we've been conditioned to think that submission is somehow oppressive and somehow the man's like in charge and a woman you, sh you need to be a boss babe and you need to put the man in his place see where that gets you because you'll be 40 years old and you'll be single if you want a masculine man that's going to be exactly what all these feminine women want him to be then he's going to be that man right so that means you need to be that woman if you want to coexist together if you want to be a masculine woman then go ahead, but you're not gonna find a masculine man because what happens when you have a masculine man and a masculine woman, you clash and it doesn't work out. You, this is why you need to understand the polarities in relationships. If you have a masculine woman, the only way that you can experience being the leader of the relationship is if you find a feminine man who's willing to submit to you. You can't have two leaders. The same way you don't have two captains of a ship, you don't have two presidents of the country, you don't have two principals of the school, you have one that's at the very top because you can't have two people that make both the decisions when it comes down to it. It needs to land on one person eventually because if it's 50-50 then who do we listen to, right? It always has to, the hierarchical power of structure falls into one person at the end. It goes up the train but then one person will have the final say. And that same thing applies for relationships. So if you're a feminine woman that wants a masculine man, then it's gonna be the masculine man's imperative desire to be a leader. That's the way it's gonna work. So if you want that, then you have to be submissive. Because if you're just as combative as he is, and just as assertive as he is, you're just gonna clash and it's not gonna work out. So what will happen, and this is what happens in so many relationships, is we have all these masculine women that are told that, yeah, you need to chase your career and you need to be a boss babe and you need to don't listen to men, you don't need men, you can do this all by yourself, queen. We have all this indoctrination going on. And then we have the weakening of men going on. So we had men that were leaders that are now submissive, and we have women that were submissive that are now leaders. So now we've reduced the roles. And as I mentioned, it's not to say one's better than the other, but this is how we coexist together. You can't have two leaders. Then what happens is, as the woman moves into more of that masculinity, she's suppressing the man's desire to move into his masculinity. And then she loses attraction for him because she wants the masculine man, but she's made him more feminine through her nature. The magnetism and the polarity in the relationship is like the more of one you get, the more it pulls off the other. You can't just rise together. Like one's got to give for the other to rise. It's like a scale of balance. This is the beauty in them when you understand it. So if you're a woman and you're gaining more masculinity, in order to stay in that relationship with that man, he needs to become more feminine. Otherwise it won't work. You get two north magnets that just repel each other or two south magnets that just repel each other. The way it works is you have a north and a south, right? And boom attract so look at what you want in your partner whether it is a masculine man or it is a feminine woman and understand how they're going to behave what's going to attract for them and what your place is in that relationship so as i said we could go into more videos about this of what is a masculine man and what is a feminine woman but i just want to make a video for you to understand the core principles of this because I see it in society so often and we're just completely diluting these roles as men and women because we're told that it's just a social contact and it's oppressive and we need to flip them and men need to become more emotional and lose that stoicism that makes men men, right? And women need to become more independent and they don't need men and, and none of this makes anyone happy. 
It doesn't make men happy, it doesn't make women happy. Because the masculine woman that can't find a man because no man's gonna put up with that, especially a masculine man. The feminine men will, the simps will, they'll put up with a masculine woman all day long. But that's not who the woman wants. She wants the leader, she wants a strong man, the guy that's gonna put her in her place a little bit. But then when he does do that, she doesn't like that because she's not submissive herself. So you see, you create all these abstract anomalies in relationships and that's why so many relationships are just not working anymore because we don't understand the two energies, the masculine and the feminine, and how they combine in a relationship. And the sooner we understand that, the sooner we can put it into our own relationships and our own life and actually create union because when you have a man in his masculine and a woman in her feminine, then you create the whole, then you create that union, that power, because where the masculine lacks, the feminine doesn't. And where the feminine lacks, the masculine doesn't. You put them together and it's perfection, it's union. You have to have that opposite. You have to have that attraction and polarity for them to attract and for them to create the whole. Otherwise you've got too much of the same thing. You need the opposites because everywhere that you're lacking, she's not and everywhere that he's lacking, you're not. It's that opposites all the time. Just understand if you're a masculine man or you're a feminine woman or you're a feminine man and a masculine woman, whatever it is, know what you bring to the relationship and what you want. And whatever you want, what energy is that? How is that energy going to behave? Is it compatible with the energy you're bringing? Because whether you believe it or not, this will be a play in your relationships. It's a play with every single relationship. So understand that and move with more awareness of understanding these energies in your relationship and you'll create more harmony. When you both know what you bring and the energy that you bring and how it's compatible with your partner, you're going to eradicate so many problems because you both know where you stand. You both understand each other on a deeper level that you're not taught. Okay, well my husband wants to understand the situation. He wants to just work it out. He wants to solve it. He wants to bring a conclusion to what I'm saying. Whereas sometimes, the feminine doesn't want the answer. They just want to express, they just want to be heard, right? So if you're a masculine man and you understand that, okay, maybe I don't need to provide an answer or a solution to my woman at the moment. Maybe she just wants to be heard. She just wants to be seen, she wants to be felt, loved. And I'm just there to, as that presence, as that calm rock, that presence to just hear them. That's it, that's all they need, that's all they want. So when we understand feminine, we understand the masculine, we can both become more of what we want together. It's so essential and so needed, especially in society today. But yeah, as I said, if you wanna see more of these videos, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, then check out either of these videos. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy them. Thanks for watching, and remember, you're here to evolve.